All right, good morning. This is Giles Edwards with 366 Weird Movies with the filmmaker of Jesus Shows You the Way to the Highway. Those are my people. We uh, make an effort to seek the world. I don't have parts. Oh, well, it's all right. I, I saw your movie. That's, that's much more impressive. Uh, to you know, seek the world and uh, seek the history of film for the best weird movies. And I hope you uh, take it as a compliment that I was very impressed with your film in the uh, context of what I'm looking for when I come to this festival. So, thank you. Uh, by the way, this is uh, Miguel Alonso, director, and apparently primarily a professor, you said? Yeah. What is it you teach? I teach uh, screenwriting and, and directing. So poor, poor students. <laughs> so still, still keeping in touch with the film with your, with your day job. Now I know you previously did one sort of feature length -ish thing, the Crumbs movie with the same actor in the lead, and then there was uh, now Jesus shows you the way to the highway. Would you um, care to explain a little about the inception of the Jesus project? Yeah, basically, well, the, the film is like a lasagna, right? So I cannot kind of find a point of inception, mm. but more like a collection of ideas. Yeah, so basically it's uh, been reflecting on the, how, where is the globalization going? And, and I realized also like, like how bad, I mean, if you see in the, um, the highest spheres of power. Yeah. I cannot. I, I, I can mention, of course, Donald Trump, but also the, this guy in Saudi Saudi Arabia that is cutting people in pieces. You know, the king. Um. Yeah. Yes. The MKB or, or something Putin? Different. No, riding the the horse half naked. No, which is <laughs> like a like a very powerful gay image, but at the same time very scary. You know. So if we see that. <coughs> we, I, I I discovered that the. Um, uh, I was making a social drama. No, but uh, <laughs> that that the uh, you know this is fear of power had becoming more and more like a comic, like uh, Hitler, mm. and very eccentric, and uh, so and we don't understand very much uh, what's going on. So I think that this fear of power is kind of uh, managing the masses in a very very strong way through social network through. Uh, so there is something that makes click in our brain when these people talk, or the way is is managed through social media and so through newspapers and everything that put us in a mode of, uh, I mean, a very strange mode of mass control. So that's kind of the philosophical reflection. But actually, then uh, I like this the world of, of comics, of villains, uh, for the this very bad kind of, uh, kind of like a mockery mm -hmm. scenarios. Yeah, you mentioned yeah villains. I guess the villains in uh, the Jesus piece would include um, the Stalin avatar. Is he referred to as Soviet Union? Is his character name, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, Batfro is sort of unclear. Uh, seems more of a, one of those um, demagogue eccentric types because he's a uh, he's a uh, was it president of Ethiopia of, of Ethiopia of yeah. Ethiopia and it's and uh, yeah the typical maybe African dictator yeah <laughs> and I I think you handled that well because yeah I know obviously a bit about uh, Idi Amin and uh, more yeah. contemporary groups there were yeah. uh, plenty of I will very politely describe as eccentric figures who yeah. ran. African yeah, I love Idi Amin Dada. Oh, yes. I love him. It's, uh, I mean, no. Well, <laughs> I don't literally. <laughs> but Put you on the record for that. But it's a, it's a character. I don't know if you have seen this movie that uh, Shreda made in, uh, in, the, um, in the 80s, a documentary about Idi <coughs> Amin Dada. Yeah. It was super funny, guy. Yeah. But at the same time, he was killing he, the people. Yeah, so yeah, he, yeah, if he had not been in charge in killing people, it would have been a great uh, you know, public personality. <laughs> yeah. But, mm. yeah, but he was throwing people to the crocodiles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I love yeah. knowing history, especially <laughs> that kind. It's just 
is fantastic. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the characters, uh, you know, based on sort of, if not real people, then real uh, composites of people. Um, obviously, they're the CIA element. Um, there was one character in particular that I wasn't quite sure who or what he was. Mr. Sophistication yeah. shows up as this, uh, I guess, an Italian power broker. Is that um, anything you have perhaps some words on? Yeah, I mean, this, uh, well, the inspiration comes from the uh, killing of the Chinese spooky, no? the, the Casabet film, that uh, there is a Mr. Sophistication that is yeah. present in the show. If you remember in the in the film, and uh, and uh, I like this kind of people who present the show, who are there there for kind of uh, he is never in power, but he wants to be in power. He's the second in power, kind of a mafia guy, and uh, actually the the guy who performed the the role was a very kind of an interesting guy. He was he was um, fighting uh, with the Muyadins in the 70s against the Soviet Union. Oh. <laughs> like he got caught. He got caught in a concentration, a Soviet concentration camp. Mm -hmm. And they told, and the, the captain there of the Soviets, he said like, you know, when you uh, beat me in chess, you can, I will liberate you, <coughs> I will uh, let you free. And he said like, for fucking three years, I was playing chess <laughs> and I never won. A single <laughs> game, you know, and then finally there was the end of the world, so he got released and he came back to Italy. But uh, and then he starts some business in Africa. I'm mean, a very interesting guy. Like uh, he start uh, taking people in a super in a super big truck, mm -hmm. like a Russian truck, uh, adventure trips in Africa. Oh, okay. But the, 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 he said like nothing was happening. No, there was no adventure. Nothing was happening. So then uh, he start creating the. Uh, Kind of the, the adventures, no? He suddenly the truck go, got a stuck, no? And it's like, oh no, it got a stuck. <laughs> and so the na the twenty <laughs> the twenty wow. tourists <laughs> have to push the the truck, and uh, actually the, it was fake, no? Oh. But uh, then when they come back home, they say, yeah, you know, and the and the truck got stuck, <laughs> and we all. <laughs> so it's this type of characters that is a kind of a, so I kind of adapt a little bit the screen to his the screenplay to mm -hmm. his sound. Uh, kind of a slow way of, of understanding things, uh, very kind of uh, acid guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> very, <laughs> very smart at the same time. Uh, yeah, you uh, mentioned that the uh, question and answer session after the uh, opening s screening for you that uh, this was um, made and starring pretty much just friends of yours, people that you've yeah. come to know, and I guess in particular I'm curious how you came to know this Italian who was in a gulag and did uh, bogus safari adventures. What? Uh I went to the Italian club in Addis Ababa. There is a, this Italian club, Juventus, where through a, a friend of mine, so there is a lot of incredible elements there. You know, people that, that don't belong to Italy anymore, mm -hmm. but they, some of them born in Ethiopia okay. from past time, some of them they... So they, they meet in a club and they play cards. And uh, <laughs> I could choose him, but I could, I could choose whoever, because the, the, the collection is astonishing. So, and uh, what brought you to Ethiopia in the first place? Because it seems you, uh, you live there. Yeah, I live there in Addis Ababa. Uh, so what, because uh, yeah, I read you were born in Madrid, Spain, Yeah. and that's obviously not far, but Ethiopia isn't yeah. a typical place to move to, I guess. Actually, I was doing nothing in Spain. I was, uh, it was the crisis, so I got the Ethiopians to get me a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite, no, no, it's like, there are so many refugees, I was a refugee <laughs> in Ethiopia. <laughs> No, actually, I started working for the embassy of Spain, but uh, I also work in the different uh, jobs in Ethiopia, like uh, film jobs. And I met a lot of people. I went there because, you know, I like, I'm very much fan of Werner Herzog and, okay, yeah. and also Jan Rusch. And I like Jan Rusch because he made all his films based on this uh, philosophy of friendship, you know, anthropology of friendship. He was going to the places, meeting people, and hey, let's do a movie together. And, and he made all these beautiful movies in the at the end of the 50s and 60s. 
So it, it's people, the kind of people inspire inspires me a lot. Like adventure, find what, what's what's there, and find what's going on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it's very inspiring. Oh, great. Yeah, I noticed another uh, thing that was obviously an inspiration to you. I'm uh, a little younger than you, but of a certain age that uh, I recognized all those beautiful computers <laughs> that uh, sprang up throughout. Um, I imagine you've had a lifelong interest in that kind of technology. Uh, when you care to elaborate for the uh, site uh, audience about uh, your combining that also with the notion of there's that sort of Cold War throwback kind of feel to the film. Yeah, I mean that computers, I, I had my first computer was this abstract CPC. <laughs> it was, it was a, a, a computer you have to insert a tape mm -hmm. and then you click play and then it loads forever like doing five minutes you have to wait and then normally <coughs> crush it and it's like fuck after five minutes it's like no even ten minutes and it gets like <laughs> and then, and then, so yeah and, and it was green green screen mm -hmm. then then it changed i moved to a spectrum sinclair oh, which yeah. was color and uh yeah i mean uh, but the, the russians they have their own kind of uh, own uh, um, computers. No? Right. So for the film, it was very interesting because we went to a museum uh, of computers and they had in Estonia and they had <coughs> a lot of uh, Soviet uh, computers and also, but we, for the for the film, we chose the first Apple computers. Mm. And uh, well, basically, I told you, I, I talk about it in the, in the Q&A, but basically for me, the this uh, kind of magma of computers from the 90s they were it was the, the seed of the of the capacity of that was developed later of uh, human psychobook yeah psychobook human analysis analysis of human behavior right mm. i mean uh, and it's a very powerful tool for mass control you know how the, what the people do know what the people think but what the people do, because what the people think and what the people do is totally different. So, so imagine you now these these computers able to analyze now millions of data of uh, things that are happening. No, I guess uh, I, I feel compelled to ask: Do you have a Facebook? I have a Facebook. I have a Facebook. Fuck. Yeah. So just just but taking that risk there. No, it's the one. <laughs> yourself to. Uh, nah, no, I mean I'm not paranoid, you know. Okay. So I'm not I'm not saying that nobody spies me. I mean, in particular, mm -hmm. maybe the Russians, since I live in Estonia and I probably say that nah, nah, nah. happened. <laughs> nobody, but um, but it's more like a, I like to analyze uh, the the trend. No one, I mean, it's some people kind of understand criticism confused with paranoia. Like, hey, they are spying me. But they are not spying yeah. you. Yeah, they're, spy spy yeah. they're spying everywhere to to get uh, certain patterns, to get certain uh, uh, curves of behavior, so they can click our our mass mode, like the the, the, the like the, the the telephone, like the, um, the iPhones. They have different modes, no airplane mode. No, yes. uh, so we our brains, I think, they work in modes. So. You can click the kind of uh, uh, pornographic mode, you know, and uh, we all have our pornographic mode, our fame mode, our intellectual mode. So, depends on what do you click. And then, for, for instance, these machines are able to analyze mode. They know that after reading the New York Times, you're gonna go to your porn, and maybe you can uh, be reading like uh, I don't know, super interesting uh, international news. But then, then you need your report. So, you know, th and these machines know it. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you you may have speaking of uh, the news cycle. I uh, sometime in the past week, I think it was uh, Elon Musk of the Tesla Corporation. He's um, unveiled plans or a promise of a device that can be that effectively can uh, allow one to control one's devices by thought. Oh. With a, uh, <coughs> The sensor is outside the brain, but it's uh, backed up close. Oh. So he's uh, 
obviously going toward that next step to make things easier for everybody. I mean, I think we in the, we are living in a world that, I mean, in, in 50 years we're not going to recognize because now we produce real kind of objects, yeah. but with augmented reality. And once we start kind of interfering with our own biology, start like I say, like, uh, not like a cy cyborg, but working with the DNA, yeah. working, with, then, then we are going to transform the world, absolutely. Well, I guess that uh, leads me to the question, are you uh, optimistic about where things are going, or? No, I'm, I'm very, I mean, I'm very s skeptic, mm -hmm. because I think, uh, especially because the, all these powers are in the hands of capitalism, which is a, which is a virus as well. I mean, for me, it's a virus because everything is profit and power. So uh, you see that people want to make films, uh, sell the films, so yes, just power and, and fame. They want to be famous and they want to, yeah, some of the people other they don't, but you know, but and if you see all the, in Madrid, all the main street, there are no, cine there are no cinemas anymore, but h &Ms, Springfield, yep. And all yeah, I noticed. Yeah, I uh, I've been going to this festival for this is the third year I've covered this festival, and before that I'd gone about every year during winter time, and there was a gap of maybe five or eight years between when I'd stopped that and when I started this. Uh -huh. And when I came back, you know, summer daylight hours, warm out, can see everything. The first festival I covered, I noticed there were a lot fewer uh, individualistic stores. There was, mm -hmm. you know, the restaurants that I had remembered, you know, some old, you know, French place or old, you know, Italian family place were gone and replaced oh. with a Chine more Chine standardized Chine. Yeah. kind of yeah. Um, thing. Yeah, that's, that's the problem, no, and, but if you see the industry of cinema, it's the same, no, Netflix, everything is kind of, it's a monopoly, it's a mm -hmm. strong, strong monopolies, and so the power is working with that, within that monopolies, you know, and of course there is counterbalance in yeah. things, but I'm not so optimistic. Because if the development of the science was managed by free, uh, independent, uh, kind of adventurous people, mm -hmm. that would be fantastic, no? yeah. but it's not, uh, it's not the case. It's difficult to get heard there. Yeah. Um, uh, I will ask you one more question, because I do have to dive to another screening for the start of my day. Um, can you recommend a hometown restaurant that you enjoy? Here? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, in uh, where you live in Ethiopia or someplace from Madrid, a restaurant that you think uh, those in that area might want to check out. In Ethiopia, sure. I think uh, you should go to the Juventus Italian Club, even if it's not Ethiopian, but... <laughs> and Johannes Kitfo. Johannes Kitfo is in a very nice Ethiopian restaurant, very popular. In Estonia, man, I think it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, my knowledge of Estonia. Estonia. <laughs> yeah, my knowledge of Estonia is it's very small, and next to some other very small countries, just sort of. Uh, it's a lot of things, but there's no no Estonia. There is no Estonia. Cuisine, cuisine, cuisine mm. and I don't know. I'm I'm from Madrid. I'm from Spain, so it's really. I mean, there's very good food in Madrid. Yes, yes, I, so I, my my spouse was in Spain for a number of weeks for a pharmacy program, finishing yeah. up a degree there, and was in uh, Castillo and probably yeah. Madrid as well. Um, now, when you were in Estonia, actually, since I do have a couple more minutes, were you, I know it's sort of, there's a divide between uh, those loyal to more Estonia and Europe and those more Russian-speaking. <coughs> um, were you in there for a length of time and in which sort of enclave did you... Well, I, I find three categories, actually, not two. There is the more kind of the, the Russians that feel... But they don't feel Russians and they oh, don't okay. feel Estonians. They feel like aliens and their passport is alien. Oh. They, say they have alien passport. Uh, it's one of the places in the world where people don't have nationality. And they have this alien passport. Then they have, there is these Estonians which are very liberal mm -hmm. and they really... Uh, belief in Europe and everything. And now the new phenomenon is the alt, Estonian alt-right, which uh, kind of, they want to, they say literally, the, the people in the Estonian government, they say literally, if you are uh, black, go back. 
from the government and uh, and that's very scary because they are not a lot they are maybe but they still the 19 from 15 to 20 percent yep so it's one out of five for yeah. and that's a uh, super that's terrible because it's uh, they are reactive against any kind of uh, uh, integration integration and and I think we live in a world where obviously integration and and you have to Im you don't have to keep the roots you have to imagine new roots imagine new no? oh I agree with you I don't know I, I never I was never very fan of roots you know like I'm not a root person I, I enjoy local histories but yeah. I also am a big fan of globalization and integration with the um, notion that we are all on the same planet and it could be high time that things just settled down because you know I still consider the word balkanization to be a bad word yeah. you know, all that uh, ethno-nationalism springing up and causing the various That's problems terrible. is I mean you can I love tortilla de patata you know whatever you know I mean I love uh, and it doesn't mean that I reject everything that comes from Spain no I mean it's, it's okay I like the food I like to go to the beach there the Mediterranean and everything but um, but I, but my 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 roots are very liquid. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean I, I grow up listening to uh, John Coltrane or Albert, mm -hmm. Albert Eiler or, or Sandra. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, this is my also my culture and really Nietzsche and this and that. So no, I mean this is or listening to Minor Threat and all the punk scene from <laughs> DC. I don't know. This is like uh, we are that. You no, know, we are not anymore like. Uh, folklore freaks yeah yeah I guess yeah I guess uh, keeping uh, keeping folklore in a historical perspective might be a good way to yeah, yeah, this. yeah some, some, some fascinating stories and certain and yeah. moving uh, certainly yeah. past folklore I'm a yeah. big fan of uh, Don Quixote which yeah, I, yeah. I tackled a few years ago in, in translation <laughs> of course uh, and that um, it's very funny oh it is very a bit long <laughs> it's it's you know it's 1100 pages but uh, it was very yeah, worthwhile and it was just like wow this is uh, this is postmodern, and yeah, there much. hasn't been a modern yet. <laughs> very much. Yeah. Like it's very. I like that spirit as well. It's very kind of a stupid. Maybe there is a certain Don Quixote, you know, so that you just in that kind of oh. a stupidity, you know, kind yeah. of grotesque yeah. stupidity. <laughs> I've forgotten about the Jesus. Idealism. Yep. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, thank you very thank much you. for your time. It's fascinating to chat with you, and uh, should actually have a review for your movie up this week. So we'll be ah, spreading the word as best we can. So. I will share it. <laughs>